Good morning, New Vision Center. My name is Reverend Leslie Goodwin. I'm associate minister here, part of the ever-growing ministerial team, and it is my day to give the message. What a fun day. So last week, we talked about how to not feel alone like the thinking process on how to remember through the paths of all these affirmations that we've learned through our classes and these messages and, and the science of mind that we read, we learn these uh, sort of rules, principles of living. And if you put them together, they tell a story that means God is always with us from within and we are safe. Whew, take a breath there because that by itself, when we can remember that, Oh, just makes life work so much better. And I don't know about you, but as much as I value safe, and I do, safe is not the end goal. There's not more safe, more safe, not in imminent danger. <laughs> that song wouldn't sell so well, right? We want to take it further, we want to take it deeper into more love, more joy, more celebration of the goodness of life, right? Yeah. So when we want to do that, we're going to, we're going to hone in on joy specifically for this message because you kind of got to pick one quality and go for it, right? If you dance around too much, you lose the point. So we're going to hone in on joy. And in order to do that, we have to take a quick pause in the very exciting world of definitions. I know, it's, it's very sexy. Definitions. Um, because we have to differentiate between happiness and joy. So happiness, I mean, we're all pro-happiness, right? Literally never has someone come into our offices and said, I, I'm just too happy. I need you to help me turn it down. But happiness is situational. Happiness is dependent on what's going on in our universe in the moment. I have this cupcake. I am so happy. I have a new relationship. I am so happy. I got the job I want. I'm so happy. Yes? Joy is a quality of the divine. It's a, it's a principle of of. Um, divine living, and it is constant. It is always present at the same amount, like oxygen, like gravity. The way our joy experience differs is, are we noticing it? Are we paying attention to it? Are we tuning into it? Are we choosing to make it super, super present in our experience? Because it's always there. I don't know if you guys know this, but there are always donuts. <laughs> Middle of the night, somewhere there's a donut. Four in the morning, donut. And the same is true about every single other thing that you enjoy. Notice, enjoy, am in joy around. But we forget. We forget. We get so honed in on the big thing. Go ahead and let yourself notice in your mind what your big thing is. The relationship, the job, the degree, the decision, the house, the lawsuit, the thing, right? We all have a couple of those, the big things, hovering in our horizon, and we have a tendency to laser focus woo, on the thing to the exclusion of everything else. And here's the thing about laser focusing in on the, the big one, right? It doesn't actually bring you more joy than the little things. Think about it. Think about the last of the big one, the degree. The, relation, the wedding, oh, weddings are huge, right? Man, we put a lot of energy into planning that wedding. And it's really fun, like the couple days before, you're amping up, it's exciting. The day of, super awesome. Couple more days, and then what starts to happen? The deflation, right? Because now we're tired, because the big ones take a lot of work. And then, so we ended up getting about a good week of amazing out of it. If we spend two years holding out for the joy of a week, is this good math? 
It's just not. When every little moment, every little thing in our lives is filled with the capacity for joy. So I love a system. We know this, right? We know this. I love a system. And there is a three-verb system that is usable in virtually every situation and virtually every quality. But today we're going to play with it with joy. And it is this. Notice, cultivate, appreciate. That three-word process just gave you the inside scoop on how I write most of my talks. You're going to notice those are the three main steps on a ton of these messages because it works. Notice, appreciate, cultivate. So what the heck is this lady talking about up here? Let's start with notice. I invite you to allow to rise up in your awareness something little, 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 insignificant even, we might say, that you just, just really enjoy. You just enjoy the heck out of it. The more ridiculous, the better. Try to stay out of the things you think you're supposed to enjoy and lean into things like watching that one bird that in my house seems to think my bedroom window is reality television. And it watches me. The thing cracks me up, drives my husband nuts, but I think it's hilarious. Like I'm that bird's the Kardashians. <laughs> I get a giggle about it every day, every day. So let your that thing rise up. And notice what it feels like on in the inside of you. It might feel like a little warm spot in the very heart of yourself. A little tingle, a little drop in the shoulders, a little... <laughs> notice that feeling. What noticing that does is allows you to start identifying what other things in your life feel that way. When we hold out for the big stuff, we're missing a bunch of fun. And when we hold out for the appropriate stuff, we're missing out on a bunch of fun. My daughter, my grown adult, in most ways, very functional daughter, has a very interesting obsession with RuPaul's Drag Race. She loves it like something I have never seen. I do not understand. <laughs> I do not understand, mostly because there's a lot of drama because it's a reality competition, right? And I don't, I don't enjoy the, the competition-y aspect of it. But she loves it. And the best way she's come to explain it to me is, Mom, I don't know. It just makes me have inside bubbles. <laughs> An inner effervescence. If something brings you an inner effervescence, it does not matter what your crabby old mother says about it. <laughs> Even if your crabby old mother is me. The best thing we can do as we're setting about noticing the things in our life, we've, we've felt this feeling now, we've noted it. We have a notation. This is what it feels like when I have the little joy, the, the inner effervescence, is to start paying attention to all the things that create that emotional essence in ourselves. And it can be surprising. There are things that I just love to do that I didn't realize I love to do. In the early mornings, I wake up relatively early and I do my spiritual practice. That's the first thing I do. And then I sit down with a Diet Coke. I don't even know if I need to drink it anymore. I think it's the sound of the bubbles. It just makes me so happy. And then, and then because I am, a, you know, an adult that you all pay to be wise, I sit down and I play Harry Potter mystery game on my phone because I have to feed my Thestral. I have to feed my Thestral. So it's, it's a winged horse, it, it doesn't matter. But it needs me, my pretend electronic wild mystery magic pet. 
needs me. And it just makes me happy. And then, you know, I go about my day of, you know, taking my shower, getting dressed, making sure my husband didn't turn off his phone alarm again. He did. And we go about our day. But I'm in a good mood. Why? I did my spiritual practice, my favorite thing I do all day. I had my delightful Diet Coke listening experience. And I played my silly little phone game. Could I defend this in a court? No. <laughs> but I know, I know if I have my little morning routine, I'm starting out my day feeling happy. But you don't have to take it from me. We're going to take it from a pro. Walt Whitman was a, poem, a poet at the beginning of transcendentalism, and he was part of the writings that really inspired the expansion of transcendentalism and really impacted Emerson, who impacted Ernest Holmes, who you might have heard of around here. He wrote a book called The Science of Mind and a bunch of other ones. We like to talk about him a lot here. And in, um, in Leaves of Grass, there is a portion of the poem called Song of Myself, in which he writes, I can just really relate to Walt Whitman in this poem. I dote on myself. There is a lot of me and all so luscious. Each moment and whatever happens thrills me with joy. I cannot tell how my ankles bend, nor whence the cause of my faintest wish, nor the cause of the friendship I emit, nor the cause of the friendship I take again. Then I walk up my stoop, I pause and consider if it really be a morning glory at my window satisfies me more than the metaphysics of books. More than the metaphysics of books? To behold the daybreak, the little light fades in the immense diaphanous shadows, the air tastes good to my palate, the hefts of the moving world at innocent gambles, silently rising, freshly exuding, scooting obliquely high and low. Something I cannot see puts forward libidinous prongs, seas of a bright juice suffuse heaven. <sighs> I mean, he talked about his own girth that is so luscious, a little flower, a little bird, the light, and friends, the littlest things. And yet he used words like upward libidinous prongs and the bright juice suffusing heaven about these little sweet details of life. I love that. When we allow ourselves to notice what brings us that joy and lean into it. Now, once we know, once we know the kinds of things that make us joyful, painting a little watercolor painting, calling a good friend and having a laugh about something that happened 38 years ago, but just still is hilarious whatever it is, then we move on from notice to cultivate. Because here's the deal. We can just sit back and let whatever happens happen and notice and enjoy that. That is a thing we can do. And we can intentionally create those experiences in our life. We can pick up the phone and play the silly game or make the phone call or write the card that we know is going to bring the smile to the face of the friend and therefore we get to enjoy that smile in advance. And then again when they call to say, I got your card. We can create opportunities and experiences to open this up for us. The actor Jonathan Groff said this, just follow your joy. Always. I think if you do that, life will take you on the course that it's meant to take you. We can get so caught up in what we're supposed to be doing. I would really love to eliminate that word from the universe, what we're supposed to be doing, what's supposed to make us happy, that we forget to go to the lunch, sit with the flowers, pet the kitty, whatever it is. We forget to do it. So I invite you to close your eyes or soften your gaze, whatever feels good, 
and allow yourself to visualize creating, cultivating an experience of doing one of those things that creates that inner effervescence. Let yourself feel what it's like. Allow that warm spot within you to expand a little bit bigger. Beautiful, and then bring your attention back into this space. Unless you're really having fun in there, and then, you know, then I've done my job, and you can, you can stay. Was it hard to imagine? No? Did it feel hard to imagine how you might be able to cultivate that? No. What gets in the way is not difficulty. What gets in the way is remembering what it is that lights us up and then taking the space and time to do it. We are so busy chasing the big thing that we think we don't have time for the things that bring us bright joy right now. Stop. They say stop and smell the roses. This is what they mean. Stop. Pet the kitten. Have the nonsensical chat with the three-year-old in the grocery store line. It usually sounds like this. Hi! Hi! <laughs> Nothing cheers me up like a conversation with a little one. They are always in that place of joy. So we've noticed. We're committed to cultivating. And then comes appreciate. Then comes appreciate. Kate Thora wrote, Appreciating the little things in life means that you focus your attention on what nurtures and sustains you in life, on everything that brings you even the smallest amount of pleasure. Appreciating means focusing in on those things. Woo, we already started. We're ahead of the game. But I'm going to take it a little bit deeper. Because here we practice gratitude as a spiritual practice. Perhaps you have heard about it. Perhaps? Yeah, oh good, good. I was like, well, we've talked about it a lot. I really hope you were listening. Appreciating and taking it deeper in, the first step there is to allow yourself to feel the appreciation. So we're going to go back one more time into that sensory place of whatever it is that brings you joy. You've cultivated it. You're in it. And let yourself really feel the gratitude for that joy. The gratitude for the sprinkles on the donut. The gratitude for that sweet little nose on the puppy that's always wet and cold and they want to nuzzle it into your neck. Whatever is your thing. Really feel the gratitude for it. And let your brain become friends with that feeling. Let your soul become friends with that feeling. And as you bring your attention once more back into this space, let's talk about ways to anchor gratitude. Now, these ways work for this this process for joy, but they conveniently work for all of the other things. You know, a process is a process is a process, right? So the first process, the one that um, our good friend Oprah made popular globally is the gratitude journal. Now this can be a literal journal, you know, the write down three things, five things, ten things, a hundred things that I'm grateful for today. Journal, little notebook by the side of your bed. Three things before you go to sleep, guaranteed better dreams, guaranteed more relaxing sleep. It's simple. Or it can be in your mind. You can just think through them. Three things, five things that are positive. In the moment when you want to just say something less than perfect, you know, like in a meeting at work or with a family member where you're like, what you get to be? Try and pause and think of, think of three things in your mind that you appreciate about that person. 
They're in there. They're in there. It brings it back around. Give yourself a moment. The gratitude journal, physical or in your mind. The second one is the 30-second tsunami. We're going to do it right now, okay? It's just emotion. Just feel your feelings. Think of your one thing and let that feeling of gratitude and joy get as big in you as you possibly can for 30 seconds. I'm counting it. Go. Let it get bigger. It's bigger than your body now. It's shooting a beam up out of the top of your head. Pretty sure it's shooting rays out of your fingertips and spreading to the people around you. And that's 30 seconds. How does your body feel different right now? Light, lit up. A bouncy, I feel bouncy. I'm often bouncy, but I feel bouncier. All right, and then it goes to the big one. Now, I'm going to tell you about it, and I'm going to demonstrate it, but we're not going to do it all together because it would get really loud for the people online because this is called the Rampage of Appreciation, and it is from the Abraham Hicks body of work, and this is where you pick that one thing, whatever it is, and for one minute straight, you say as many positive things about it as you can possibly come up with. So I'm going to give about 10 seconds, and I'm going to focus in on Sandy because I can see her. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Sandy is the happiest, funniest, most bubbly person that you'll ever meet in the whole world, and she's super, super generous. She will do anything for you. She absolutely adores music, and she, gets, she turns into like a giddy 16-year-old when music that she loves is about to happen. She's like, yee yee she is kind and loving and compassionate. She loves this community and has done amazing work for it for as long as I've known her. And she's been here longer than I have, and I am over my 10 seconds. Whew. And you have that in you. You have that in you for every person you know and everything you've ever done in your life. Even people that you might be frustrated with, there are infinite valuable, appreciatable things in you. And when you let it out without trying to check it or decide what's appropriate or what's important, when you just let it out and really cultivate the ability for it to work through you, the joy not only lifts you up, lights you up, but it spreads. Has it spread? Yes. Yes. So around here, we like to give homework Oh, you ever feel the energy in a room go down real, real fast? <laughs> we like to send you home with an invitation, a call to action, what I call homework. And so here is what it is. Two sets. First of all, go seek your joy. You are going to find that there's really no going. It's everywhere. It's everywhere you are. Allow yourself to enjoy your joy. Cultivate it. Appreciate it. So that's number one. And number two is really take this three-step pattern, this notice, cultivate, appreciate pattern into your life. Because what you will find is it elevates the love you experience. It, ele it elevates the excitement you experience. It elevates the creativity you experience. It elevates the kindness you experience. Whatever it is you wish to find inside of yourself is already there. What you seek is seeking you. And if you notice it, cultivate it, and appreciate it, you will have that experience in your life. And so it is. And let us anchor this in with some prayer. Oh, how good it is to lean into the knowingness <sighs> that there is love and appreciation, there is peace and grace, there is kindness and wholeness overflowing for all of us, that we live in a world that is so abundant with the good that we can't move a millimeter in any direction without encountering it, we can't take a breath without it moving into our body, and we can't move a cell without encountering God's grace, God's goodness, God's wholeness, God's depth. 
It's amazing. This world is amazing. We are amazing. And so we can lean into this and allow the good in ourselves to be amplified and shining out to everyone around us. And we don't have to do any of it on our own. Infinite Spirit is right where we are, supporting. So yes, we are safe. Yes, everything is good. Yes, whatever is needed is either already here or in the process of expanding within us, just exactly as we are. Every little thing is good. And so we just open ourselves to the unfoldment of that goodness in our lives and call all of it delightful and precious and healing. And so it is. Thank you.